Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and welcome to another formulating video. Today we are going to make some lip oil. If you've ever tried putting just like plain liquid oil on your lips, you might be wondering what the appeal of a lip oil is. I thought the same thing when I first heard of lip oils. In my early making days, I had tried applying just like straight oil to my mouth, and it left me feeling like I'd just eaten a really aggressively dressed salad. It was not a nice feeling at all. However, when I actually started researching lip oils instead of just going by the name, I learned that they aren't just oils. They've got an added bit of magic that makes them fantastic lip moisturizers that have become a fast favorite of mine. Today I'm going to teach you how to make three different lip oil formulations. I'm going to share what that bit of magic is that makes them opulent instead of oily, and I just really want to get you inspired to create your very own lip oils. If you are new to my channel, welcome! I have been sharing free formulations on my blog and here in YouTube for over a decade now. So if there's something you'd like to learn how to make, I've probably made a video on it. So please subscribe. I would love to see you around. What is a lip oil? Very basically speaking, a lip oil is a lip moisturizer. I kind of think of them as like a three-way hybrid between a lip balm, a facial oil serum, and a lip gloss. Much like a lip balm, lip oils are used to moisturize the lips. Like a facial oil serum, lip oils contain lots of beautiful carrier oils and can also include oil-soluble actives and extracts for added skincare slash lip care benefits. And like a lip gloss, lip oils will add some shine, they're liquid, and they're typically clear. Lip oils tend to be a bit thinner, less sticky and less shiny than a lip gloss with more skin care slash lip care benefits. So yeah, kind of like a little bit like a lip gloss, a little bit like a lip balm, and a little bit like a facial oil serum. To formulate a lip oil, you'll need two broad categories of ingredients. The first category is the oils. You can have tons of fun here with all kinds of different liquid carrier oils and esters. The second ingredient category is an ingredient that boosts viscosity and adds richness to the lip oil formulation, making it feel like a luxurious, substantial product, something you want on your mouth rather than just straight oil. This ingredient is what makes lip oils lovely and effective and is absolutely essential to making lip oils. Each of the three formulations I'm sharing today have a lot of fun with that liquid carrier oil part, also introducing elements like oil-soluble extracts, antioxidants, essential and flavor oils, and even some hyaluronic acid. If you don't have the particular carrier oils I've used, you can use different ones if you want. Make sure you read the total free partner blog post for more information on substitutions and all sorts of other things to do with lip oil formulation. The richness boosting thickening ingredient I'm using in all three of these formulations is polybutene. This is a super thick, sticky, crystal clear emollient that makes these lip oils feel rich, cushiony and long lasting. Each of the three formulations in this video use a different percentage of polybutene for different viscosities and richness levels. Mine is from TKB Trading and I'm afraid that is the only place I found it for sale to home crafters. There are other options for boosting the richness of lip oils, but most of the ingredients I found used in lip oils sold at places like Sephora aren't available to small makers. The totally free partner blog post discusses a lot of potential alternatives to polybutene, as well as quite a few that won't work, so please make sure you are giving that post a read. As always, it's linked in the description box below this video. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing a lip oil video featuring a different thickening ingredient. Each of the three different lip oil formulations we're making today, we're doing in a 10 gram batch, which will last quite a while. A tube of lip balm is about four and a half grams, so we're sort of making about six tubes of lip balm worth of lip moisturizing goodness today. The first formulation we're making is the simplest of the three, starring deep green blackberry oil and fresh minty peppermint essential oil. You want to weigh all the ingredients into a small beaker, bowl, or disposable plastic cup. I really recommend choosing something that has a pouring spout and I'm going to be using a disposable cup for easier cleanup. And if you give it a little squeeze, it creates a little sort of pouring spout. You'll need four grams of polybutene and this creates a fluid yet rich feeling lip oil. 5.7 grams of unrefined blackberry seed oil is our star oil. I was really excited to incorporate some blackberry oil into a lip oil formulation, both for its green color and its fabulous label appeal. Who doesn't love the sound of blackberry lip oil? 
If you don't have blackberry seed oil, you can easily use a different liquid oil or a blend of them. This formulation is really, really easy to change up and customize. 0.2 grams of vitamin E helps extend the shelf life of the formulation, and 0.1 grams of peppermint essential oil adds a refreshing pop that complements the green color of the blackberry seed oil nicely. Our second lip oil formulation is rather luxurious, starring vitamin-rich rosehip oil, silky squalane, a bit of oil-soluble vitamin C, and a touch of hyaluronic acid. You'll need 5 grams of polybutene. This is 50% and makes for a richer, thicker, and slightly tackier final product than the 40% used in the first formulation. If you're wondering how I decided how much polybutene to use in these formulations, I made a patron-exclusive video about different polybutene concentrations and how they feel in lip oil formulations. So if you become a $10 a month patron, you can watch that right now to learn more, along with more than 50 other patron exclusive videos. 3.5 grams of rosehip oil gives this lip oil a lovely golden color. One gram of olive squalane further boosts emolliency, but if you don't have it, you could definitely use more rosehip oil instead. 0.2 grams of vitamin E helps extend the shelf life of the formulation, protecting the rosehip oil from oxidization. And then we've got 0.1 grams of each tetrahexyldecyl ascorbate, a flavor oil. I'm using TKB's green apple and Hylerlip. Tetrahexyldecyl ascorbate is a stable oil-soluble format of vitamin C that helps boost collagen production. A small amount of flavor oil adds a fruity kick, but you could definitely use a lip-safe essential oil instead. And Hylerlip is a blended ingredient that contains hyaluronic acid and peptides to hydrate, plump, and smooth the lips. A quick reminder, if you're wondering where you can purchase any of the ingredients, they are all linked in the Totally Free Partner blog post, which you'll find linked in the description box below this video. And our third lip oil formulation is all about soothing starring rich oat oil and oat extract. You'll need six grams of polybutene. This makes for the richest, thickest, tackiest lip oil of the three formulations I'm sharing today. I'd say we're starting to get to the fuzzy gray area between lip oil and lip glosses with this one, but I do think this still leans more towards the lip oil side of things. I like tacky lip things, so I'm okay with this 60% concentration of polybutene, but if you hate tacky lip things, I'd recommend dropping the polybutene down to 4 or 5 grams and using more oat oil to keep this formulation balanced. You'll need 3.4 grams of oat oil. I love this rich golden oil, and this was one of the first oils I reached for when I started formulating lip oils. 0.3 grams of an oil-soluble oat extract complements the oat oil with extra skin-soothing goodness. You could replace this with a different lip-safe oil-soluble extract, or just use more oat oil if you don't have it. 0.2 grams of vitamin E helps extend the shelf life of the oil, and 0.1 grams of flavor oil, I'm using TKB's pineapple, gives a cheery, fruity punch. I was drawn to the pineapple flavor oil for this formulation because the oat oil makes it such a cheery yellow color. Something you might have noticed is that none of these formulations feature any added color in the form of micas or dyes or pigments. That's because polybutene won't keep them suspended. I tried it months ago and this is what happens. You'll also encounter settling if you use an unrefined carrier oil that tends to sediment over time. If you'd like to incorporate some color or a sediment-prone carrier oil, I've written about a quick and easy swap you can make in the free partner blog post that will keep colorful things from settling out. Once you've weighed all the ingredients into your little mixing cups, all that's left is stirring everything together until uniform. Pour the lip oils into a tube with a wand or a squeezy lip gloss tube. These formulations are liquids, so they aren't a good fit for a jar or twist-up lip balm tube. I'm using some soft squeeze tubes that I've propped up in a beaker so they're easy to fill. There will be some air bubbles in the lip oils to start with, but they'll work their way out in a couple hours and you'll be left with clear, 
bubble-free lip oils. Use these lip oils as you'd use any lip gloss or lip balm. They work beautifully on their own or applied over lip color. Each of these formulations should last at least a year before oxidizing, but do take care to keep them somewhere relatively cool. So don't leave them in your car to cook during the summer or store them on a sunny windowsill. And that's how to make your very own lip oils using polybutene. If you love the idea of making your very own makeup, I think you'll love this DIY as well. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.